What's up, guys? Kyle here from Bourbon Blind. I'm here again with Bryant on Bourbon uh, on Instagram. Check him out. Um, he'd always do some really cool stuff. Super knowledgeable guy. Um, go check him out. So we're going to start with some Rebel Yell 10-year, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got barrel 504-3537, and it got put in the wood. It looks like May of 06. So I must you is that a 2016 then? Do you know? Uh, yes, yeah. I, I bought this uh, several months ago. Um, it is not the most recent release. Okay. Well, mine's from last year. It's actually five one three two three seven zero, age since two of seven. Okay. So. So this might have had a little bit more age on it then. So now. So essentially, I, I, I'm getting 11 year old fits without the fancy bottle. <laughs> <laughs> right that's exactly what you're doing yes at a fraction of the price at a fraction of the price so last time i did a review on this blind and mm -hmm. i wasn't a huge fan of it i mean there was nothing wrong with it but i mean it just wasn't you know what i mean yeah uh, it, I, I i'll i'll put my cards on the table early i'm not <clears throat> i'm not a huge weeded fan. I don't dislike weeders, but it's not one that it's not stuff that I pursue. I was, I was really happy to get this, got it at MSRP, opened the bottle and was really pleasantly surprised um, and drank a good half of it in the first month or so. And then I've kind of just took it out of the rotation a little bit. I wasn't able to find a backup and uh, kind of wanted to keep one around, but the nose has really opened up. I mean, you get all that mind, that, that kind of chewy caramel. I mean, you, you get that, you get that kind of syrupy sweet on it, um, um, on the nose at least. Yeah, I mean, on mine, it, uh, uh, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of it. And, um, but I had a bunch of people say to go ahead and just give it like a, you know, a month or two, let it um, give it a little air. Yeah, yeah, give it a little air and try it again. So I was like, oh, all right. Um, uh. And I did, and I went back to it, and I think it definitely helped. Um, I, I would say that this is a <clears throat> properly rated. Obviously, you know, we like to talk about this is a great value or this is overrated and it's not this. Right. I think I was out the door for 67 68 bucks on this, and you're looking at a single barrel, 10-year. I don't, I don't know if it's NCF. I, I doubt it, but that's t 10 years in the wood, and – 60 65 bucks that's that that's that's fair value to me um yeah, yeah know, i mean I, there's nothing wrong with that especially if it's a limited release you know what i mean yeah um I, my I, bourbon I, journey is in here but um cool dude if you haven't checked him out um i think i paid 70 plus tax for okay. mine so um hey. It, it, it's one I've enjoyed. It, I, I, I didn't open it and drink it, and I didn't think that I got that I got had. And I think we all have those bottles in our cabinets that that we oh, yeah. feel like we got had. But <clears throat> at the same time, it wasn't one that I rushed out to like. I have to find a backup, or I'm going to trade something for it to to get a second one. It just uh, it's it's a nice pour. Uh, if if you like well aged weeders, you know have at it. It's a it's a good good price for what it is. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, you are not on um, YouTube, correct? Uh, no, not really to my knowledge. Okay. I mean, um, I, I, my bourbon journey, um, I want to say, I think it's Scott, but don't quote me on that. Sorry. Um, anyway, he said, go ahead and post your link uh, to your Instagram in the chat just so people can check you out. Okay. Um, I'll have to do that later. I don't know okay. how to do that. And I'll, I'll figure uh, it out. I'll put it in the comments too. But okay. uh yeah, I think this really, this really opened up, and I think originally I gave it like a thirty to forty dollar price range, or maybe a forty to fifty dollar price range. Yeah, um, I think if I was doing it blind again with it opening up a little bit, that that would that would probably increase a little bit. I, I think it, it's definitely representative of 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 the weeded class. You know, obviously. You know, you and I we're 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 kind of hip deep into this whole bourbon thing, and we've got friends, you know, coworkers, or people we <laughs> right. school with, or whatever. <clears throat> you come over to their house, say, "Hey, you want to bring some bottles?" And uh, you know, I, I generally try and bring 
something from each house or something, you know, that, that people can get and then a couple bottles that, that aren't as readily available. Yeah. Uh, I think this is, is definitely a, an excellent example of, of a weeded bourbon. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I got too. a little frog in my throat. I've been battling a head cold for a month. So <laughs> you're good. You're good. We actually had to put this chat off guys for, uh, um, a little while. Yeah. And, uh, Chad says he went to finally pull the trigger on a Four Roses Barrel Proof Friday, and of course they were sold out. Oh, oh. oh Chad! Anytime I see a Four Roses Barrel pick, I, I just pick it up. Like there's no, unless I've just heard that it's bad, which is super rare. Yeah, um, I just pick it up. Uh, how, how many have you opened in the car to see if you need to go buy a second one? <laughs> I have actually not done that, but that's a good idea. I haven't oh, thought of that. You will. <laughs> Uh, it's just a matter of time. I'll do it from now on. Um, I was in Chicago and they had a stupid price on them. Uh, it was really? like 50, 50 bucks plus tax. Oh, wow. I thought you were about to say like 90 and I'm like, no. I'm, I'm and they sure had a head that way sometime. They had a couple of Russell's picks for like 43 or 47 bucks plus Gee, tax. Us. The, the best right. I've seen in my market is 49 for a Russell's. And it was a really, really nice one. Uh, <laughs> They did kind of hung around on shelves, but you know, it's as we've talked about before, you know, people, people love to roll in a store and say, Hey man, you got any Weller? And they'll walk by <laughs> two or right. three really good store picks and store guys like, Nope, don't have any. And they turn around and walk back out. And Dude, I'm so over like, th well, think they're into bourbon. That <clears throat> craze. Like I'm just give me some good store picks and I'm happy. You yep. know what I mean? <laughs> yep. that, that's me all day long. Uh, uh, so. All right, so are we on to number two? Um, I'm still working on mine. Um, speaking of which, you were saying you don't know if this is NCF or not. Is that something that you look for? Uh, it, it Absolutely it is. Um, I, I have not yet uh, had the opportunity to go and participate in Barrel Pick in a Rick House. Um, everybody I've talked to that's done it, they said it's great. I know you were up at Elijah Crip <clears throat> not long ago. And to me, the closest I can get to when they put that thief in that barrel and they – you know, take, take it around and everybody that's there tasting gets some in their glass. That's that, that's what it is. Right. I mean, right. <clears throat> they talk about the years of experience of all these master distillers and they talk about their grains and their yeast and their barrels, and their Rick house and mother nature doing its magic thing. So why do you want to take some of that out? Now? I mean, I realize you got to filter out the chunks of barrel and all that. I mean, nobody right. wants, wants that, but you know, and I, that, I did say <laughs> that, you know, every, whiskey is charcoal filtered in one way or the other yeah. but um on sorry i just hit my mic um on this one i actually got like some char pieces floating around in the barrel oh nice the bottle. so maybe it is oh. um but um as it's far not as the jumping out to me goes, it is. um i know that's what everyone <laughs> like that's what everyone wants mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with that but um one of the guys at Buffalo Trace that does like the their barrel pick program, um, a whiskey society actually got them to do the barrel half NCF, half non NCF. Oh, interesting. Which is really the only way you could really tell a difference of which one's better because you know barrel versus barrel, you know, is yeah, yeah, different, it's like wide variance. Um. So anyway, their their whiskey group did a blind tasting between them, and it was almost unanimous that everyone liked the non NCF version. Really? Yeah, that's that's interesting. I've I've talked to uh, one of my one of my whiskey buds here in town that uh, an NCF seven year Weller pick came in. Actually, I had to drive like an hour and a half to get get it. Um, <laughs> I've done and, it. And, yeah. Well, in, in credit to the store, they, they charged a fair price. I think it was like thirty five bucks. They put out five or six bottles a day, and they only sold they only sold you one, which I, that's a pretty fair way to 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 spread it around and make sure people get it. And anyway, right. I, I got one, and I and uh, sharing it with my friend. He said, "You know, there's just because I think I like the regular off the shelf a little bit better than this." So I, I don't know. So we're doing uh, the one on one next, then? Is that what? Yeah, yeah, always. All right. So I, I guess my get my cool audio. My two favorite, my two favorite bourbons are the Four Roses store picks and the Russell's Reserve, and they're both non-chill filtered. So maybe, right? I, I, I'm certainly biased uh, in in that regard. 
I mean, there's there's definitely nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? No. But um, I just don't buy into the NCF thing or the craze, I guess you could say. But I kind of get that way about a lot of stuff. Everyone's like, oh, this is the one you have to have. And I'm like, I, I'll take no. it later. I'll try it somewhere or something. Like Once yeah. everyone starts going crazy for it, like unless I just see it on the shelf, I'm like, all right, I'll just deal with it later. Um, yeah. Chad says he snagged his first Elijah Craig barrel proof and bookers this weekend. Good uh, for you, Chad. And it's a B518, which I have nice. it on a fairly good authority. One of my buddies, he's done – um four or five blind tastings with uh his local whiskey guys and um in a blind tasting almost every single person picked that b518 over the 2000 uh, george t stag really <laughs> it, it, yeah you know but i mean people get so wrapped up in in all the hype and all this stuff and it's it's really to me it illustrates especially this pour that, that we're we're pouring now, the one hundred one, the one hundred one. How high quality bourbon's floor is, if if that makes any sense. Uh, right. You know, I mean, this one hundred one's twenty two bucks in my market. The stuff they're putting out now is seven to ten years old. Uh, that's from a, a Bruce Russell uh, AMA that he did on that he did on Reddit. Uh, you know, Turkey's got the lower barrel proof in the barrel entry proof, you know, so there's not uh, on average, not as much cutting, which uh, I am a huge fan of, by the way. Absolutely. Huge fan of. Absolutely. And then I think I talked about this the last time I was on, um, I'd had more pours that time than this time. So I can't remember all of it. Um, but that dusty Turkey, uh, their barrel entry proof was one Oh seven, you know, and Eddie Russell, I, I talked to this you know, a week ago, you right. know, they dumped 1400 barrels and it would average 104, 105 proof. So which is just phenomenal, which is phenomenal. phenomenal. So, so for their main line, I mean, all those dusty, you know, eight one Oh ones from the eighties and nineties, right. You know, you're talking not, not very much cutting to get you to, you know, to get you to that one Oh one. So there's a reason that's, a, that was a very close to barrel proof. It's just a lower proof barrel proof. Right. Um, um and I've actually seen a couple blind tests done. Um, I know I'm big on the blind test, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah. They lined up like the 101, the Russell's Reserve, the Kentucky Spirit, um, some Russell's picks. Um, what am I missing? None of the Masters keeps, but like, oh, and I think like the 81 proof. Yeah. Um, the 81 proof pretty much unanimously scored bottom. Shock. Yeah. Um, but one person picked the 101 as their absolute favorite. Uh, someone else picked the... Um, I think the Russell's top and the one one second above all the other ones. So, it, I mean, that just goes to show like the one one is legit. It, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very legit. Um, it, it's my favorite bottle to kind of bring to, uh, to blinds, you know, everybody kind of brings something and, you know, to just kind of, kind of slip a, you know, $25 shelfy into a lineup, of, right. <laughs> you know, of more, you know, higher priced, you know, harder to get bourbons and see what, you know, what people's reaction to it is, um, yeah. you know, I mean, and obviously, you know, y'all had your, your one oh one episode where, you know, you, you put, oh, them, we just put a price raved. tag on it. Oh, absolutely. Raved about it. So, and it's a, uh, I mean, you can do so much with it, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's great. Neat. We're both enjoying it now. Neat. You right. know, if you're grilling or hanging out on the porch, you put a little ice on it in you know, South Carolina, it's hot, you know, 11 months out of the year. Yep. And uh, it'll stand up. To it. It'll stand it'll, up to that it'll ice. stand up to it. It does great in cocktails. You know, and if your your brother in law that doesn't you know wants to drink you know Coke and ginger ale with you know everything, it's like okay, great, it's thirty four dollars a handle. To have yeah, don't it. feel bad about it. Like yeah. go go to town. Like you can see, like I'm, I didn't buy this that long ago. So, like when I drink, um, you know, I'll have a glass or two at a night or something, and mm -hmm. I find myself I reach for the one hundred one, mm -hmm. four roses, small batch and single barrel. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes some Buffalo Trace, but I'm down to, I think, just store picks of those, which boo-hoo. But, yeah. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I really don't drink like a lot of the, you know, more expensive stuff. I save that for when people come over, mm -hmm. then, you know, we'll get out the, the good stuff. But um, I've learned like you don't have to spend a lot of money 
to, you know what I mean? Enjoy a great pour. That, no, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, and, in in all of us kind of bourbon folks, we kind of know everybody kind of has theirs, whether it's, you know, one, uh, one oh one, whether it's McKenna 10, whether it's the, the four roses, their standard single barrel, these are all great whiskeys. You can find them in about any shop and, uh, you know, you're out the door for thirty four, thirty five dollars, and it's a pour that you're going to be happy with, right? So. Yeah. Um, so Chad Holly says, "Is rare breed worth the price jump, or should I just get a one hundred one?" I've been curious about that. As my buddy, as my buddy Rare Bird, who is is obviously you know Mister Wild Turkey, uh, he he says rare breed is one hundred one turned up on steroids. I mean, it's right. It's it's the high def version of 101. So everything that you like yeah, about I, 101, rare breed has it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I really like the rare breed. Um, I think it's worth it for fifty bucks for a barrel proof. Yep. You know, good something good. I mean, Aaron's getting a wine glass. Um, <laughs> Brian says hi. He waved. Um, yeah, I mean, 50 bucks for a barrel proof that sits on the shelf and is delicious. Like, yep. It's you really, can't go wrong. you really can't go wrong. I, I, I don't, I mean, I always keep a couple rare breeds open and I don't, I don't reach for it every day or, or even every week. But when I do, it just, it delivers, man. Right. It's, it's good stuff. Um, so. Now, the one I have left is the 116. The, um, the one the, that I just finished was the 112. Wh which I was I didn't taste them back to back though. So I don't know um, um among turkey people the 112 is generally the not as favored of that lineup. The one before that the uh rare breed 03 I think it was this the 108.1 108.2 right. and it was it was available for 8 or 9 years and apparently that was Jimmy's favorite. That's really good. <laughs> at your uh you know some of your more out of the way liquor stores you can still find it right. um 112 was really kind of young and kind of grainy for me the 116 <laughs> is uh is a step in the right direction okay so I'd, li I'd like to see a little bit a little bit older juice in it um toll of thomas says he's uh having some evan williams 1783 which i think is another good good great budget you know what i mean mm-hmm um, less than 20 bucks i think a bottle around yep. here yeah and like there's nothing nothing wrong with that no absolutely drink drink what you like man i mean that's i mean don't don't look at somebody's instagram and feel bad <laughs> about about what you like to drink you know uh, what i'm saying you know I mean, like i i really hate to be like that guy you know what i mean like oh look at everything that i have or whatever like i just now went and put my more nicer stuff to the front of the cabinet because you know, I think it just presents better for the channel, but I really could care less if people are like, Oh, you got such and such. Like I get bottles all the time from the store and like, I don't post it on Instagram. I don't yeah. put it up on YouTube. Like I just, it just goes in my cabinet or, you know, in the bunker. And I, you know, like I, I don't have to be that, Oh, look what I got. You know, I finally scored a, you know, Pappy or a Pappy 10 year, um, you know, like I be, be more excited about a good OWA store pick and you will the, <laughs> right? the 10 or 12 year Van Winkles in my limited, obviously limited experience. I haven't had everyone ever, I'd, but I'd take a, even just an off the shelf one Oh seven before some of the Pappy Tenon or the Van Winkle lot, 10 yeah, and 12. Right. Yeah. Especially yeah. like the lot B and stuff like lot B. I, I yeah. agree. <laughs> lot D. Um, you know, it'd be cool to have it sitting on my shelf, but I'm not going to go crazy for it. And I'm definitely not going to pay secondary prices for it when absolutely know, not. I can go get one oh one or some of this sitting on the shelf for a fraction of the price and be a whole lot happier with it. I agree. So, so, so speaking of things that you have to go through some hoops to get, you want to go to our third pour? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Remind me what it is. I think I know. The one, the one with the UK stamp that you've got to pay Ooh. to have this thing FedExed from here to high yonder and back again. So I got this one. 
Oh, oh, that's mine. So we're tasting <laughs> the same one. Fantastic. Yep. I even mar- marked it Bryant Instagram. <laughs> Excellent. So we're drinking from the same barrel. This was dumped on 11617 barrel 181 Rick 56. And obviously if it's a blend, it's coming out of Buffalo Trace's Warehouse H. Now I've heard on the Warehouse H, I'm just going to go all in on this. Do it. <laughs> um, I've heard on the, the Warehouse, there's actually some other stuff that is stored in Warehouse H. Do you know anything about that? I, all, all I know is that all Blanton's comes from H, and I think it is a uh, masonry built. It's a masonry rick house. If I'm not, I, I, I'm not. I don't. I don't profess to be a Buffalo Trace know it all. I, I like their right. whiskey. I do. Kind of like we just talked about earlier. You know, push back on some of the you know counter. You know, everybody. It, Buffalo Trace in South Carolina is an allocated bourbon. That for 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 whatever that's worth to you. When it comes in in total wine or wherever, it goes into the box and you can only buy one. And same <laughs> same with Eagle Rare, you know. Oh my gosh! Yeah, absolutely. Dude, that stuff is stacked on the shelf here at yeah. retail price. Like, and I know some different states, you know, like they get different allocations and whatnot. Um, but but I know guys in in my market that again they'll walk by one hundred and one or McKenna ten or you know all these other stuff we're talking about. And it's like. Well, I didn't have Eagle Rare. I guess I'm not buying bourbon. Which, if if all you want to drink is Eagle Rare, knock yourself out. But right, yeah, there's like, nothing wrong with that. Oh, you, um, I don't does have. She, does she like it or not like it? Yeah, really. She likes the smell of it so far. No, I tasted it. It's amazing. Uh, is it hot to you at all? This no. this, this bottle has been hot it? for yes. me every damn no, time. Not hot. What is the proof? What is this? One one oh three. No. And I don't like hot bourbon. In fact, whatever the mid winter's draft is just went into my wine because bourbon makes wine taste good. Um, yeah. I'm one of them. She puts a no. midwinter night's dram in her wine, apparently. <laughs> Tasted bad until I <laughs> added bourbon to it. Um, but that's amazing. You would not think that's a 103. I don't get a whole lot of There's heat no. on it. It's 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 got a weird finish to me. I don't Maybe wine, maybe because it's been open. After I, I, wine, it has no weird finish. Drink more wine. No, it's bad. Shit's bad for you. I, I've put I've put this in a blind mm. with leathery with a good you say leathery. I love. Yeah, it. after finish is a little leathery. <laughs> I never get leather. I get hay a lot for whatever reason. So, um, go ahead. No, I was just saying, like, it's weird. I've put this bottle in a blind with, oh, some Bell Mead store picks and Buffalo Trace store picks, um, Rock Hill Farms, and it has never done super well for, for, for whatever reason. Um, right. I put this in a blind with a friend of mine with Rock Hill Farms, the Blanton's Gold, uh, Wild Turkey 101 from 2000 in a in – a, Russell store pick and the gold came in fourth out of that. Wow. So, and he uh, liked the one actually, one the most. I saw um, someone did a blind test between the Blanton's green label, which is the 80 proof and um, the uh, just off the shelf, ancient age, not the old stuff. And ancient age beat out the green label Blanton's. The, the day I pay FedEx over the Atlantic ocean for 80 proof bourbon, you have complete, <laughs> And total. Apparently, there is troll to come kick me in the face. (laughs) So, apparently, there is nothing on the shelf here. That's when you find a friend in Europe to send it to you. I need to find a friend in Japan who can send me all the wild turkey that's hanging around down there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Go to bed. So, what do you think of it? Um, I like it. It's kind of got like a richness on the nose. It does. It it has a it has a very nice nose. It's just there's. It, it it's nice. Like I like it. Yeah. Like I mean, there's some caramel, some vanilla, the maybe a little bit of that leathery, like she was talking about. But but but, but going back to our to the to the bourbon blind. So if it's coming down to cash money coming out of your wallet. 
if I could buy this for 60 or 70 bucks in the States, yeah, absolutely. If I have to pay $130 a bottle and have it shipped from master of malt or whoever, I think they got shut down not long ago. They're trying to come back. I don't, I don't know. One of those online, you know, I think they got bought out by Budweiser or Anheuser-Busch is what I heard. In Bev, man, they're killing everything. (laughs) Uh, I've watched a bought wicked weed and Anheuser-Busch operates and it's pretty shady. Shady. Way off in the weeds. Um, there's a craft uh, brewery in uh, Athens, Georgia, called Creature Comforts. That's really good. I don't know if y'all drink craft beer or not, but he <laughs> he he worked for InBev for a number of years and then started a craft distillery. And he, <clears throat> he wrote a really good article when Wicked Weed got bought uh, about how I mean their their whole Budweiser thing is to drive down craft beer prices. So mm-hmm. people people that spend you know, money on that they ten fifteen bucks a bottle. Yeah, pe- people will spend seventeen dollars on a six pack, and they see eight dollar Budweiser, and they think Budweiser's cheap. Their whole thing is to to drive that down. So interesting, way off in the weeds, and not um, bourbon related. So we'll we'll sh- yeah. And just real quick on that, like um, I've heard, like they do because in like a retail store, and especially in like a grocery store, retail space is king or a shelf space. Yeah, Where shelf space is king. Level. Um, and you know, like she said, those premium. I level locations and that kind of stuff. Um, like Budweiser comes out with stuff like different labels and whatnot that they don't even care if it sells, but they know that they're going to get shelf space, which means other people aren't going to get shelf space. Yeah. So just, just shady stuff. Uh, but as far as the Blanton's gold, like I, Oh, I like it. I'd probably, obviously it's not blind. I'd say 50 to 60 bucks. If yeah. I was in the line, and I don't know for sure because obviously there's you know stuff rolling around in my head that's influencing it. But um, I mean, it's 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 she better. Said it, it, it's better than off the shelf blends, right? Mm. But I mean, no question, and, no and, question. But, and again, I don't know how easy it is to come across that for y'all. That's that's again, that's another very allocated. I um, usually see it bourbon down here at least once a month or so. Um, and a lot of times I just pass up on it. I don't drink yeah. it that often. I keep one open in the cabinet and I usually keep at least one spare backup. And that's, <coughs> I, you know, I, I had a, I had a fair amount stockpiled at one point in time. And, but I mean, there it, it's still, at least in Columbia, it was a lot of people's first, like really nice bourbon that they bought. Mm-hmm. And it has, and it's a gorgeous bottle and it's, and it's a very balanced whiskey and it's a very enjoyable oh, yeah. whiskey. It's beautiful. You know, and, and, I, I I don't I don't want it to come across like I'm knocking plants like I like it, um, but it's one of those things that it's like the hype has just gotten so so wrapped up in it that you're like it's good I yeah, if you like it buy it but there's so other stuff out there too that's Mo's just as good. Mo's Chun said, "Is there a BTAC version of Blanton?" Oh man, this is a whole nother episode, and I, I don't know all the specifics of it, but apparently, all the Mash Bill Two stuff is owned actually by Age International, and then Buffalo Trace contract distills it. If there's somebody out there that's way smarter than me that I'm getting this completely wrong, please feel free to get in touch with me and, and tell me all about it. But there's a reason that none of the Mash Bill Two stuff, Blanton's Rock Hill Farms. Uh, Hancock's Presidential Reserve, Elmer T. Lee. There's a reason none of those are in then the BTAC because they they're not right out owned by by Buffalo Trace. They're owned. Those brands are actually owned by another company that has some form so of relationship. Say, I, I don't know what that relationship is, but they're not right, outright really owned by BTAC. I've never heard that before, um, but I'd be super interested to hear more about that. Um, like you said, that'd be awesome for another episode. Um, as far as Moe's goes, a BTAC version of Blanton's, it looks like this. It's not straight actually BTAC, but the straight from the barrel, um, a lot of people say like it's the sixth BTAC. Yeah. Even though it's technically not, um, it sits on the shelf in like Australia and Europe and stuff. Um, if you can find one of these, I, I'd say get it. Even if you have to pay 120 bucks or so on the secondary, I would pick one up. Absolutely. I've I've got a sample of one, but I haven't I haven't had it yet. So it's it's like Blanton's turned up to eleven. Really? It is. 
and, and, and for my money, out of out of the whole Buffalo Trace lineup, Rock Hill Farms is is probably my favorite of 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 that uh, right. lineup. It's just you know, it seems that it's about a twice a year release, and it came and went here like a like a whisper. Uh, I, I didn't get any. Well, I mean, I saw some, but it was like two hundred fifty dollars a bottle, and I'm you know uh, yeah. d- deal me out yeah. at that point in time. Yes, Mose. This he asked if it's barrel strength. This it is barrel strength. This one is one hundred and thirty point six proof, um, and obviously it's Blanton, so it's single barrel. So um, they're each. Aaron says she wants some more Blanton's gold. That's good, <laughs> and that's saying a lot. There's very few bourbons. That I'll I have to send you some straight from the barrel or something. We'll work out a trade. Sounds good. All right, on to the next, yes. Uh, This is the one that I'm most curious to hear your thoughts about. Our 11-year-old OBSO. Oh, yes. So 51.2%, which this is what I love. So it's, you know, obviously, you know, Four Roses, they've got the one-story, one-story warehouses. They're six ricks high, which I think would technically be two stories, but that's neither here nor there. So probably first or second Rick, very low. Four Roses goes in at 120 proof, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this was first Rick. <clears throat> yep. Warehouse yeah. two, south side, um, 60th rack in, first tier, and then barrel Q, so A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way to Q, whatever number okay. works out to be. How do, you, how, do, how do you interpret the which way it's facing? I'm curious on that. So where it says warehouse QS? Yes. Q is south. the warehouse. S is the south side. Oh, okay. So I the got second you. letter will always be either N, S, W, or E. I thought that would – okay, that makes complete and total sense. I did not know that. See, that I'm learning something new every day, and I'm a four roses junkie all the way. Oh. Um, before we get too far, um, the 101 today is a special day. Yes. Tell us about that. We totally forgot. Absolutely. So 64 years ago today, Jimmy Russell got hired at wild Turkey, which if you do the math on that, that's sometime in the 1950s. Um, and combined with Jimmy's experience and his son, Eddie, who started there in 1981, so today, the two master distillers at Wild Turkey, Jimmy and Eddie Russell, have 101 combined years of, uh, of distilling experience. And uh, it shows up when they put out a super quality product like 101 that you and I can buy for you know, $22, $23 a barrel or the, uh, the Russell's Reserves that, you know, that we, we've talked about before and how much yeah. we enjoy those. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll raise a glass to, uh, to the Russell family and Wild Turkey. And uh, another hundred years of really good bourbon whiskey. Absolutely. Um, so on the OBSO, right? Yep. Yep. It's just a it's a thick nose to me. I'm honestly not getting a whole lot on it. Now, this is a brand new bottle that we just opened. So cherry. Cherry? I'll go cherries with you on that. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of like the dark candied ones. Four roses. Cheers, Ryan. Mm. You definitely get the oak. I mean, eleven years in, so you're you're gonna yep. get that, but it's not, it's not overpowering. Oh, that is delicious. <laughs> that is delicious. Red fruit, cherries, caramel. That's Just nice. keep the gold painted to the pointed towards the camera. Don't show them the side because there might be a couple <laughs> left. Yeah, I don't want them. I don't want them to see what <laughs> store it's at. <laughs> nah, that's a little. Hopefully, they'll just you know. Yeah, there's no more. It's all gone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> This isn't. This one came from a store that we usually don't buy from. Uh, it came from Bryant. Oh, thanks. Cheers. <laughs> You're welcome. I have to look long and hard. I've had to like pull some uh, major stops to get some recipes from Four Roses. 
I was two recipes. I was missing two recipes, and one of them was an OBSQ, and she had it shipped from Northern California. Oh, wow. Actually, I actually had um, it shipped from Northern California to Southern California to me when I sent a packing label saying, hey, want to break the law? <laughs> to one of her friends in California so she can get it shipped here. You know, sometimes you got to bend, bend the rule. You got to bend the rule a little bit. We've all been there. No, there's no judging here. No, there's no, absolutely no judging. I, I hope none of my local FedEx people are watching this because they, they're convinced. <laughs> I That's why you don't ship with FedEx. <laughs> they're convinced I run a barbecue sauce <laughs> empire. Um, our, uh, we use UPS for everything. And I know our guys that actually deliver, like they could care less. Yeah. They really could. They, they send me bottles, like they'll set it down on the shelf. They're like, sounds like alcohol. And I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> that's why you got to put some pennies in a pill bottle or a box of macaroni in there. I was going to say yeah. macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Or the nerds. You remember those little boxes of nerds when we had when we were kids? No, that's the, the good Annie's. Stuff. Annie's. Annie's is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Goes good we, with bourbon. We've all, we've all been there. So. Ryan says he always labels the box essential oils. Hey, that's a smart move. <laughs> Especially yeah. if it's samples. That's a good one. Yeah. Yep. Olive oil, infused olive oil. That's that's always Don't a good work. one. You make you make vanilla extract or whatever. I mean. <laughs> Mo says, what do you think of wild turkey long branch? I'll let you uh, answer it. Um, I actually I have not bought a bottle yet, as as much of a wild turkey fan as I am. I had a sample of it a week ago, a week ago tomorrow. And it's for, for what wild turkey intends it to be. It's very nice. Um, wild turkey did not make this whiskey for, for guys like us that are talking about non-chill filtered and South facing warehouses. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're not the target audience for that. And that's fine. She likes it. She's not um, a bourbon guy. Or no, bourbon that's, like she likes that, it. So, that's great. Hey, and that's what it's for. Bourbon is really good over rice pudding. Well, you know, whatever works for you. <laughs> or you pour um, it into wine that tastes like crap. So, <laughs> for me, Long Branch, I mean, it's it's a good beginner bourbon. You know, kind of like you said, like it's that's who its target market is. And I think that's where it really delivers. I, absolutely. But if you can get two bottles of 101 versus one bottle of Long Branch, then I'm buying 101. Like, for a, and, and actually, I, I, I watched the uh, the whole four minute commercial with with McConaughey, wow. um, and apparently Long Branch was it means an extended wow. hand, like you know, welcome. Um, that so, makes I mean, sense. I, I think I get down is, on that. Marketing is, did a good job on that one. It is very much, and this is an introduction to to Wild Turkey, and it's and it's got some of those turkey notes, but they're just turned down, you know. And right. there's going to be people that buy it because of McConaughey or they buy it for this and that, but there's going to be some people that buy it and like it and they're going to want a little more and they're going to look for hopefully that's kind of like their, their gateway drug. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) And they're going to look to one oh one or they're going to look to Russell's or, or whatever, you know, it's easy for us to get, you know, tunnel vision on, you know, you know, what do we want? We want single barrel. We want barrel proof, you know, from this warehouse or this floor and, you know, while Turkey has 800,000 barrels aging and they can't all be from the fifth floor of warehouse B. <laughs> like a lot you of know. the Four Roses guys, they were going after um, <coughs> warehouse P south side from Rick uh, or Rack 26, that whole row. Yeah. So it was a really good run. And like, I'm sure it was, but, you know, the guy, the other 95% of even most enthusiast bourbon drinkers, like, they'll never hear about that. They'll never, you know what I mean? Like they're not that yeah. deep into it and that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as they're buying stuff like I'm and they enjoy it, then I'm, you know, yeah, I'm abs- happy for them. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting um, on a, can I talk about another podcast real quick? Do I have permission to do oh, that please real quick? Do, please do. So, so the guys just up the road from you, the dad's drinking bourbon, uh, John and Zeke, they had a, uh, Bernie Lewis. Whoa, from, wait a second. Wait a second. I right up the road from you. I thought they were in like Nashville area. Yeah, from you, not me. I'm in. South oh, Carolina. I thought you meant yeah. from you. I was like, dude, no, no. you're like an hour away. Yeah. No. 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 no <laughs> what, are we doing, what are we doing this on Hangouts for? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, but but Bernie Lubbers was on, and he made a really good point. He said, you know, I go to these things, and these you know whiskey guys that kind of corner me, like, you know, how can how can you do this, Evan Williams, you know, Apple or the Evan Williams eggnog? And he goes, if profits from that allow us to build one more fifty thousand barrel warehouse, <laughs> you, you okay with that? Right. <laughs> you know, and it's it's a it's a pretty damn good point. You know, not everybody wants to drink the way we like to drink it. Some people like the eggnog. Some people like the like the buffalo the, trace the, and fireball. You know, farm. Yeah. I mean, dude. I, I mean, they're, they're building one fifty thousand barrel warehouse a year. You know, and that money's. Coming. I heard it was so, like every three or four months they're building really? a new warehouse. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And a, a, some people are like, oh, you know, they should raise the price of their pappy and BTAC and this, that, and the other. And someone pointed out, they're like, dude, even if they doubled the price on that, like you're talking about fractions of a percent of profit. I like mean, it's make so little of it that that's not where their profit comes from. No, their profit isn't it. it I mean, no, and it's, it's from Fireball. It's yeah. from, you know, vodka. It's from, you know, it's not from their super special stuff. Like, that's not where their profits come from. So it, why would they raise the price? And, and to me, it's it goes back to the the, the testament of, of bourbon and, and why I like it so much. And it's the authenticity of it. You know, if if you look at how you make bourbon, it is an insane way to make money. You know, they oh, yeah. say it's, if, if it's a good way to take a big pile of money and turn it into a little pile of money. And <laughs> especially and if you're a, starting from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a reason that there's only what eight or 10 really big, big distilleries. When you think about it, I mean, you know, Bean makers, Turkey, heaven Hill, Jack, George Dickel, uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm. I mean, it, Michter's. Even I mean, Dickel's I, not that big. D- I mean, Dickel's not that big. They're not. Know? They're not quite a craft no. distillery, but they're not like. They're no, definitely not a, like Jack, which is and, 15 minutes away. Like, and Dickel's only an hour, but still, Dickel's small. It, yeah. it, and Dickel's really there's, little. Like, there's like, well, and you're 50, like, what just happened? Yeah, there's like 50 or 60 people working there. It's it's not, and and they never got automated. Diageo kind of neglected them for so long. Right. They're still hand doing most of that which stuff. if it, if we're gonna say it like there are some 13 and 14 year old george dickel store picks out there that are just phenomenal. really good mm-hmm. phenomenal I'll, hand raised george dickel 12 i'll i'll always like that yeah. juice that was one oh, of yeah. the first ones that i first way back when when i got into this started messing now. around with like, making cocktails and all but if you saw our, uh, did you see our review of the Dickel Twelve? I I that? did actually. I think that's when I first. That's when we first came in contact because I you kind of teased it and I said I know exactly what. Oh, you were that was you. <laughs> I said I know exactly what bottle that is. And yeah, really. you said I used to drink that all the time. And yep, like I said, honestly, I've had that bottle for probably over a year, and I didn't think anything of it because it was Dickel. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. it's George Dickel. Like, oh, it's Jack Daniels. Like, it, it yeah. is what it is. I don't care about it. And I tried it blind, and I was like, oh, this stuff is phenomenal. And I don't remember pouring that one. Yeah, Dickel 12. Is that bourbon? Is uh, that Tennessee it's Tennessee whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so what's next on the list is that um, – I, I poured another four rows. We'll, we, we'll, we'll go to the dram. But this four roses is just so good. It is. Like, I finished it fairly quickly. I don't blame you. It was really good. So, so that was a hit. For me, I finished mine, but mine's always a quarter of what you guys drink. <laughs> so, we're talking about doing the ten roses episode. Yeah, oh. um, where what? we're gonna pour all ten recipes blind. Um, we might invite a couple other people down just know. to do it. Oh, that's um, gonna screw with us. I'm gonna know what I'm pouring, but I guess you won't it won't remember. matter. You won't remember. I will too, but it won't Not matter. Not all ten of them. Um, but that's a lot of bourbon, man. And that's 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 where I was going with this. <laughs> We're is trying to figure it out. I you was like, have... okay, we can pour a half ounce of each, but not that's not. really just like you a might little have to... taste. They, you know, like you can't go back for that. You might, you might have to break that up to E team and B team, right? And I was like, well, we could do like but an you ounce really do each. An A team and a B team of four roses. No, E, e and B, the the oh, mash okay. bells. Um, I was like, well, we could do but, like an ounce of each, but then you're talking about 10, 10 ounces, ounces. Jeez, which is just under a half a bottle of barrel proof whiskey. Like that's a lot of fucking whiskey. Hey, Chad <laughs> holiday. Yeah. 10 roses for the win. Yeah. Yes. We're all going to be toasted. Yeah. Or you'll dead, be one or the other. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> well, that's the problem. After about three or four, your palate's just burn. You're like, tastes pretty good to me. Like, right. It tastes like really good whiskey. <laughs> 
By the time you get to the tenth one, you're like, this is the shit right here. Yes. <laughs> We've been trying to figure it out. I love four roses. So I like I like breaking it up between the B and E. Yeah, I, I mean that's or, or or I mean I don't know pair the or do the do this yeast pairwise. You know, right. Do the OESO and the OBSO. Um, it's also good. Like I, I I've said it to anybody that'll listen to me talk whiskey for more than three minutes, whether it's here at a bar or friends like Four Roses and Russells, like. I'm good. I buy other stuff. I drink other stuff. I've got other stuff in my cabinet. Right. Yeah. But for what you're getting for the money you're paying, especially when you look at what secondary is on some of this stuff, or <clears throat> when you walk into a to a store and they've got a you know a, a really jacked up price on a good bottle but not a great bottle, mm-hmm. it's just I don't. You know, you walk in and they've got a Weller Twelve for one ninety nine, and you're like. <laughs> You're like, or uh, not on purpose. I, I don't know. Like, like I, I wouldn't give you half of that. Sorry. You know, I mean, I just, you know, that's a nice museum you got going back there. I'm sure somebody <laughs> will pay for it at some point in time. But right. again, it's like, okay, I'm going to go grab this 11 year old OESK for 63 bucks out the door. And I'm you know, happy, happy as I'm happy all day long. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't feel bad. You're like, oh, no. No, absolutely like, not. And as far as Weller 12 goes, like I'd take 107 over 12 any day of the week. Oh, I wouldn't even have to think twice about it. Like, I don't know. Enough to say. So well, most of the weather, Weller 12 I've come across has somehow transfigured itself into either Four Roses or or Russell's. So, <laughs> right. You know. Um, so should we do this last one? Yeah, let's – let's. I got to figure out something to do with this. This <laughs> bottle is beautiful. It is a sexy bottle. I have a you have that. bottle where the uh, the glass is actually like iridescent, like it looks like a like Tiny a mother of things. pearl. We're making a we're gonna make a lamp out of it. I figured okay. as much. You would say that. Are you talking about? I'm like, gonna get all five acts and all scenes. Oh God, that's a lot of money. Yeah. What, what? Which one? What? What are you pouring? Uh, act five, five scene, scene three, three. midwinter I've, night's dram. And it fixed my wine. I had sour wine. I poured a little bit of that in it and it was amazing. I've, I've <laughs> got a half bottle act five scene two free to a good home. So, okay. So right before this yep. one then. Yeah. The one right before it. So, um, uh, I'm not going to begin to try and explain what's on this label. It's beautiful. Aaron, it, it's, uh, it's great. They do a good job uh, with it. Erin says she wants to get a shirt. Um, we're probably going to offer it through the channel. For um, says bourbon makes everything better with a bottle of wine well, or beer. I, I pour it into everything. Cereal. I don't eat cereal because uh, I don't eat carbs, but it would make cereal better. <laughs> I agree. With that. I, it, if you think about it, like cereal, rice pudding, pretty much the same. It's, um, it's good. It's uh, I I like rye, but I like bourbon so much better because rye is all up front, ah. and it's that spicy punch, and then it's gone. Like there's no finish on rye. And what I love about bourbon is I take a sip of bourbon and I think about it for a few minutes, and I smack my lips, and I get a little bit of that finish, and that's that's what I like. There's talk to a guy at work. He's like, take a sip of bourbon. Ten minutes later, you still taste bourbon. I'm like, yeah, that's. That's, that's 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 the good. idea. That's yeah, the good that part right there. Then. <laughs> I grew up drinking bourbon. People in New Orleans like it's medicinal. So like from my earliest like I, I hate to say this like when I was teething, my mom would grab a bottle of bourbon and rub it on my gums. So and then it goes on to bread pudding and you make card sauce with it. And yeah. there's a rule: you don't make anything with anything you won't drink straight. So I that's, grew up, a, that's a great rule. It is. It's a great rule with wine, yeah. beer. No, it doesn't anything, matter what yeah. it is. If, if it, yeah, don't cook with what you wouldn't drink. Agreed. Yeah. And so I've always had little bits and tastes. My dad drinks scotch. I have been drinking scotch since I was two years old. It tastes like shit. But um, my mom's been drinking it too for, you know, 38 years of my life. And I take little bits. I don't like it straight up. I like, I mean, I drink in comparison for people. Which way do I need to go? <laughs> I, this is about as much as I can handle. That's but still a I pretty pour, good pour. Yeah. And I pour it in wine. Well, I pour it in these beer. These are the same distance from the camera. 
So, oh, okay. I got yeah, <laughs> I drink baby drinks, but it, it's it came from Heaven Hill from their tasting. And it's great in beer. It makes your beer taste better. You got a sour glass of wine and you pour some bourbon in it. It's like, okay, you can drink it now. And it tastes amazing. And that's the way I drink bourbon. I don't, I, I, I don't discriminate. However, there's a couple, like if you watch the show, you'll hear me go, mm, let's see what they say about this one. <laughs> and it's like, uh, there's, there's classes to it. But at the same time, you drink what you pour and you mix only what you drink. So, and you go with that. Drink what you want the way you want to. Right? There you go. That's right. <laughs> so I got to say, oh, I should probably put this over here so people know what we're drinking. Um, this has one of, I think, the best nose um, just because it's so unique. Like, I, I really like that port finish. I think it is port, isn't it? I want to say. I'm going to ruin it. If, if this was in the office confessional, I'd tell you I was back to the OBSO. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. It's okay. It's it, at, Again, I like it for what I paid for it. Will I buy one this year? Probably not. Right um, the High West. Yeah. And, and, the, and the thing is, I mean, I like, I, I, I like people out there doing different right. stuff. You know what I'm saying? And in, in saying, let's try this or let's try that without being gimmicky. Uh, so, you know, ch cheers to them. It's it's good. It's not really for me, but that doesn't mean it might not be for you. And if you, if it is for you and you like it, drink up. God, this, <sighs> this OBSO is really damn good, man. Like, it really I'm, is, and that is one I, of the hardest recipes to get. Well, it's part of the, it's part of the small batch, so you know the Love lion's that. share of that goes to. Apparently, last year they only put out like seven or eight OBSO barrels. Um, barrels. So, um, but the for me, OBSO and OBSQ were my last two ones that I just could not find locally. Really, we we were. It's it's weird when I first got into this a couple summers ago, or for friend of the Four Roses thing. Like I'm, I, I picked this OBSO up and I'm okay. I'll try it and really liked it. And I'm like, I've got to get more of this. So I went to one local in town. It's like, well, they've got an OBSO. And then I went to another local. And it's like, well, they've got OBSO. I'm like, how, in, oh God, <laughs> how in the hell is it? Like, I just thought this was the shit's just, you know, hanging from the tree. trees. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That's how not the case. Um, and, and then everybody in town got OBSQ and it's just like, well, whoa. damn, damn where are you? Uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Gotcha. That's not too far. Um, yeah, not too far. Yeah, and, OBSO and, and OBSQ are my last two ones that I had to get. It was um, hell finding it online, too. It was yeah. not easy. I literally had to pull teeth. I was looking for both of them, and it literally it came down to, I was like, okay, I can get it out of California. I got enough friends. Somebody's going to send it to me. Yep. And I just started calling. That's that is dedication. I salute that. <laughs> that that is a good wife right there. <laughs> it is, and that's good. It, it, it is, it, but it's it's like we got two OESKs in. Like there's one in town, and then there's one in Florence. And actually, that one we talked about. Oh, I love OESK. Florence, the Florence barrel might have to wait. We've got this big ass hurricane rolling down, and when I get off, when when I'm off on Thursday, driving east is probably not going to be the best idea that I could come mm -hmm. up with. So that one might have to wait for a couple of days. But the other one we talked about, I've got you covered on. Awesome. Love it. Um, the OESK, I absolutely love. And it's, I thought it was easy to get because, like you said, like around here, there was a ton of them for a while. And I was like, cool. You know what I mean? These are everywhere. And apparently, I don't know, either that or I just haven't come across them. But um, my, my theory on this, and I have no... This is just at, from a consumer level. Like, I'm not connected. I don't get samples. I don't know a lot of tight end people. But, like, they've got to rotate these warehouses, right? Right. Like, this year, Russell's Warehouse B and Warehouse D have been on fire, and they've been putting out a ton of barrels. They were <clears throat> – uh, Wild Turkey was in town last week, and 
my buddy Rarebird picked a barrel. A um, you know, couple barrel groups in town picked barrels. You know, a lot of locals picked barrels. Yep. And they were all from their Camp Nelson, which is a distillery that was defunct and Wild Turkey bought the warehouses. And there's like six warehouses and they're like an hour from Lawrenceburg and they're, they're right by a national cemetery. Right. Um, and it's actually where the 2002, the most recent Four Roses or uh, Wild Turkey release came from. Um, but all the picks there, from my understanding, talking to guys that were there, where they were all Camp Nelson. So they kind of have to like, you know, there's only so many cherry barrels and so many where ha- warehouses. I mean, you gotta, you gotta rotate that around. Right. So oh yeah. For, for whatever reason, a couple of years ago, there's a ton of OBSO around, you know, North South Carolina and Georgia, you know, now, you know, a store in town and a store down the road, they both get a 10 year old OESK. Like, you, you see that often enough, and it's not an accident. You know, right. this and store I, and this store both like get a Four Roses, wonder, like, and they're both OBSQ, and it's like, shit, what are we picking from, boys? I got to kind of wonder, like, what what causes that? Because I know at least at Four Roses, like, they used to roll out 10 barrels and yep. it was all 10 recipes, and now it's like seven or eight, which in today's barrel pick world is still – A lot more than what you get at a lot of places. Um, like I know Buffalo Trace, and when we did our Heaven Hill pick, it was like three barrels. And yep. if That's you didn't it. like it, then someone else will buy it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I know Russell's, they do quite a bit, uh, like six to eight, I think. Um, and I know Four Roses does like seven or eight, and they said they try and get, you know, as many different recipes as they can. Yeah. Um, you know, they try and get one barrel from each recipe. But- and, and I'm, I've talked to a lot of people that are, that are big four roses fans. And, you know, there's, you know, obviously the, the private barrel groups and, you know, we kind of know who they are that when they go and pick them, they, they ask specifically for the barrel to be turned around, you know, right. bourbon blind. Right. You know, so they don't want to go in thinking, well, we know OESK or we know OBSO or we know, you know, OESV, whatever, you know, they just, they want the blank end of the barrel and then, and then go from there and pick, you know, what you like best, which, you know, tip of the cap to those guys, because again, it's about the juice. It's not about the label. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's good for them. You know what I mean? Um, some people are like, Oh, I got to get the OESK cause it looks good on the label and people know that one. And, you know, like I said, I love OESK personally, but like when you go into it like that, you're like, okay, well, whatever one's OBSK is going to win then. Yeah. Like how I mean, good was that barrel compared to the other seven of them that were sitting there? Like, and, and- and the way I look at it is even if – and, and uh, so K, V, and O are my favorites. The, now, I've had more of those than I have F and Q, but uh, of what I've had, those are my favorites. So if I go into it and it's blind and there's an F or a Q that beats it, to me that's not, well, that wasn't a K or a V that, that I, I should have liked but I didn't. It's, it's more a testament to this is a really kick-ass K, this is a really kick-ass F you know, look at the barrel on its merits. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. Totally. So. Is that, is that midwinters or is that back to four roses? It is. It's, it's the midwinters. Um, super dark from that port. Which is probably why I like it more. She likes the port finish. Have you had revival yet? The wild turkey revival? No, and it's, I want to. It's it's the newest Masters Keep. I haven't bought one yet. Um, I've had one sample. <laughs> I told Eddie Russell, I'm like, I said, I mean this in a 100% a good way. So that bourbon is a three ring circus. Like it has got, <laughs> <laughs> it's got so damn much going on. I don't know if I'm smart enough to drink it. Like, <laughs> and again, I'm not a finished bourbon guy, but like, it's 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 a lot. Um, right. So, and then I got another sample from another really good friend of mine, um, or a very generous friend. Um, and I just, I haven't between being busy in the head cold and all this other stuff, I just, I haven't had a chance to get into it yet. Uh, but, uh, who am I kidding? I'll probably end up picking up a bottle here before too. <laughs> you know, bourbon um, helps cold. Yeah. Oh, that tr- trust me. It, it, I, I, I what were we were supposed to do it Saturday night or Sunday night. And yeah. Is that why you guys canceled? Oh, that was you know what? Props. Thank you. You did us a I, favor. How was you have no idea. I had five kids in this house. There was no way, no way you were gonna do a podcast. So I'm glad that you were sick. I'm sorry. 
no, no, that's fine. Like, I'm like, I just, I can't, I said, I just can't like, like I was telling you earlier, like I always get bananas on old forester. Always. Right. It's like go to every, every time, every time I open up OF SIG. And again, that's one of my $22 dailies. I like to keep it. And I nosed it. I'm like, I don't get bananas. I don't, I don't smell anything. So I, <laughs> I knocked back like an ounce of bookers, like I, 128 proof, you know, whatever. And like nothing, like it tasted like, <laughs> It tasted like alcohol and like, I just, I mean, I just, I just, I couldn't taste anything. After the show, let me talk to you. I got an oil for that. An <laughs> oil. Essential oils, crap. For I real, got something this time. I can make it fix. I, I, I do that. that in the neti pot. You all do the neti pot. You uh, be careful. Oh, no. I had a no, buddy no, that no, did no, the no, neti no. pot. No. I couldn't do that. I, I can do it. I it's got tough, one for it makes me parasitic better. meningitis. That's all I got. We're all right. Put enough salt in there; it'll kill anything. Are you are you back on the OESO? Yeah, yeah, we're back on it. So OBSO, sorry. If we're talking about neti pot, we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> That's right. I've, there, our, there are our, probably our, four, our, our, our viewer base just went. Boo! Yeah, there are four people out there that are saying these people don't know what they're talking about, and I'm not staying up for this. Not <laughs> tomorrow. It'll be okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm curious. I do like that midwinter nose, though. I really do. Really? Let me. It's that port finish. I, it every time. I just, I just get rye on it. Like, I, really? and the thing is, I like, I love high rye bourbon. Like, I love Four Roses. I love wild turkey, and it just, I don't know. I'm not. I don't dislike it. I'm not saying it's. I love it. So like, we're we're down to three, down. three viewers. Not my thing. Um, so, I'm yeah, not gonna. We, we ran off the other three. I'm not gonna put this out there for everyone. Um, keep talking, honey. Keep talking about what? I don't know. I can hide behind a bottle. I'm supposed to keep talking, and I don't do that very well. But I do like this. This bottle really did fix my wine. Um, so if you don't, or if you're iffy on rye, careful. Um. There's two things. I may have. Did I show you this last time? Oh, that's a good mm -mm. bottle. No, I, I've had that. I had that at a whiskey festival last year, and I was. By the time I ended up there, my palate and my soul so, was wrecked. It's just it's eighty dollars. So here's here's the key with this one, though. It's a Russell's uh, and a one hundred and one in my neighborhood. Um, Lincoln Road. Oh yeah, we, I'll anything from Lincoln Road. I'll, I'll and, be on board with. And not only that. Is it uh, cast? This is 110 proof. Okay. All right. So send me some of that. It's the off the shelf sherry just up to a whole nother level. I actually need to call them and see if they have any more. Um, my other favorite rye that um, I've only talked about it once before on um, Your post. A, a live stream, which was also fairly deep in. Jason and I were slightly inebriated. Only slightly. Um, by the time we finished the live stream, because we actually did it after we taped a few episodes, um, is this one out of Atlanta, Resurgence Rye. Oh my um, gosh, you're that far into that bottle. Is that is it is it sourced or is it their juice? I believe it's theirs. It's theirs. And it is phenomenal. It literally tastes like. Like you don't get that rye spice out of it, but it literally smells and tastes like a fresh baked rye bread. Interesting. How old is it? Um, I don't think it says. Okay. But it doesn't taste super young. I mean, it doesn't taste super old. I can't believe it. Is, is it is, and it's a it's a straight whiskey. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a rye malt whiskey. Have, have, Double have you, copper pot distilled rye malt whiskey. And it's out of Atlanta, Georgia. I can't believe he's as far in American this single malt rye. Have but, you have you had Peerless yet? I'm curious what you think about that. No, I don't think so. If I did, I don't remember. I may have had it at a buddy's house, but we were we tasted a lot of stuff that night. Um, there's a there's a barrel in town, but it's about a buck twenty five. Um, I it's, saw it last time I went to Kentucky, and dude, they had literally like cases of it, like cases upon cases for I think like a hundred or hundred and ten bucks a piece. 
It's it's uh, interesting. Uh, for what I can tell, I mean, they do the low barrel entry. They do a sweet mash. They don't do the sour mash. <coughs> Excuse me. They got a very low barrel entry proof. But two year old rye for 120 bucks. Like again, you know, I like to think we're kind of, you know, and that's why I keep passing on it. Like, co- well, co- conservative all, whiskey consumers, but, right? Um, second, know, like, why? For a two year old rye, and I've heard it's. I've heard a couple people say it's good. I've heard a bunch of people say it's really hot. I've got a sample that I haven't I haven't gotten into that a a, a, a guy I follow on Twitter who is very generous to share, but I haven't I haven't quite gotten into it yet. So, um, so actually, Party Source is on here. Um, Midsummer Night's Dram. Um, he said Peerless is actually very nice and the quality is great. Um, and I, like I said, I've heard that from a few people. Um, Ryan says super young right now, but in four or five years, yes. And I agree. <laughs> is, like is, in four or the, five years, is the price tag going to grow with the age? <laughs> like that's the, I the, hope not. So if I'm 120 bucks for a two year ride, what's a six year bourbon going to look like? Right. And I hope they don't, they don't do that. Like if they keep putting out their own stuff, you know what I mean? They can keep their, the same yeah. price or whatever. And again, you know, props to them. I, th- I think Peerless is doing it right. I think Wilderness Trail is doing it right. Um, you know, put putting out age, you know, whiskey's new riff. I know we talked about new riff last time. Yeah, you know, that was good, especially so the, for four years. It's ridiculous. So these kind of startup or craft distilleries that are that are being patient and they're not putting out juice before you know two years or four years. You know, props to them, and I and I want to try it, but you know. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like, I really want to try it before I can plop down a hundred dollars on a two year, two year bottle. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and again, you know, there's a reason that Wild Turkey can put out one hundred one at twenty three bucks or whatever. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a hard business to get into, man. Right. Um, Party Source says New Riff rocks, and I agree. Like I said, that one time I tasted it, it was phenomenal I, and thick and oily, and it was I, good. I, I know the Pursuit Boys are working on a barrel. I think we're both both uh, supporters of what Kenny and Ryan are putting together and what they're putting out. So uh, I'd I'll, I'll be curious to uh, be curious to try some new Riff product. Have you heard what they're doing? No. Okay, we'll talk after. Okay. after this. Ooh. All right. And um, everyone online just went what. So uh, Mo said, is the Resurgence Rye a high rye mash bill? Uh, is actually a rye whiskey, Moe's, which means it's at least 51%, 51% corn, where um, a bourbon has to be at least 51% corn, and the rest can be made up of rye. A rye whiskey has to be at least 51% rye, and the rest made up of corn, malt, barley, uh, what have you. Quinoa, yeah, I mean, whatever at that point. Um, <laughs> All right. Let's sign um, off on that. I want to. I want to hear what the Pursuit Boys are up to. All right. (laughs) Um. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, We definitely appreciate it. Bryant underscore on underscore Bourbon on Instagram. Um. We're on YouTube, obviously. We're also on Bourbon Blind on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Uh, We actually just went live with our Patreon page. Um. Come get free shirts. I make Patreon. them. I design them. Put Patreon's going to bleed my have. ass dry. I will make them towards what you like. Um, pa- Patreon's going to kill me. Like, I- <laughs> uh, don't don't feel obligated. Um, basically, there's different, you know, the different tiers and that kind of stuff. And some of it is uh, like a spreadsheet of our. Um, the first tier is like our spreadsheet of our prices that we've given everything so far. Um, We've got some free shirts, some free Gillen Cairns, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, we'll we'll take care of you. So um, anyway, we appreciate it, guys. Go check us out. Um, I'm going to try and put his Instagram feed in the description. That'd be uh, fantastic. And also the um, if you want to go ahead and post a comment, um, yes, uh, go ahead and just post it in the comment section. Your link. Um, Mo said he's got a great show. Appreciate that. Party source. Cheers to you guys. Or- Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all listening to me prattle about whiskey and instead of watching Monday Night Football. 
There was football yeah, on tonight. It was Lions versus Jets. It was, <laughs> it was a bad game anyway. <laughs> um, sorry, the computer's over here and the camera's over here. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, I'll see you in a sec. But uh, appreciate you guys. Y'all are awesome. Like I said, go check us out on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, that kind of stuff. Twitter is pretty much just Instagram. But um, also go check out Bryant on Bourbon yep. on Instagram also. And um, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>